Trump's Mar-a-Lago classified documents case tonight is at a critical point. The Trump-appointed judge, Eileen Cannon, inexplicably not announcing a trial date and raising eyebrows tonight with new directions just given to the prosecutors and Trump's team. As I'm sure you know by now, in addition to lying about his personal wealth, Tiny Fingers is under indictment in Florida for willful retention of classified documents after leaving office and deliberately obstructing the retrieval by the government. This is Trump-appointed Judge Eileen Cannon, who's presiding over Trump's federal criminal trial down in Disneyland. She's either willfully assisting Trump through delay tactics, where he might never go to trial should he win in November, or she's merely an incompetent putz, or both. Cannon, like the majority of the Supreme Court justices, is a member of the Federalist Society, an uber-conservative group always looking to strike down federal protections for women and minorities while favoring corporations and the wealthy. She had relatively little experience as a lawyer when nominated by Trump and confirmed in November of 2020 by the Senate, which was then controlled by Republicans. Her appointment to the federal bench came only 12 years after she was first admitted to practice law, and 12 years is the minimum experience the bar requires nominees to have. Cannon's rulings in this case have been widely regarded as prejudicial, including the one that earned her a knuckle slap from the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. Former White House lawyer Ty Cobb joined the chorus of legal minds concluding that she's lost hers. Yeah, this is a remarkable misunderstanding of the applicable law. Um, it's embarrassing. Um, you know, she's been um, uh, struggling so uh, dramatically in this case ever since the start uh, when she was... Uh, uh, she butchered the special master decision and the 11th Circuit uh, uh, took her to task for it. Uh, this is this is a total, um, totally baffling position. First, she appears to believe that the Presidential Records Act is actually consequential in the case, which it is not. OK, what is the Presidential Records Act and how does it apply or not apply to Trump's charges? So there are several laws that are relevant here. The primary law is something called the Presidential Records Act. And this is a post-Watergate law that's designed to ensure that all public documents of the presidency related to public functions are, are become the property of the United States and that they're transferred to the National Archives. Uh, and they basically prohibit uh, Trump from doing what he did in, in uh, sending these documents to the 15 the boxes, 15 boxes to Mar-a-Lago. This is an Espionage Act case. This is not a Presidential Records Violation Act case. This is um, the theory that um, uh, Trump has the ability to designate classified material as personal records is absurd on its face. There is no legal support for that, but she has put Jack Smith in a position of trying to draft uh, <laughs> jury instructions in advance that would uh, posit that question to the jury. Uh, I think that, you know, it, it is such a fundamental error and it is it is so um, uh, so reflective of bias that it, it does provide a basis, you know, not not a dispositive basis, but it does provide a basis for seeking her recusal. You know, she's just ignoring uh, a raft of equally absurd motions as well. Uh, you know, persistently delaying this case. So, uh, so, you know, a month ago, she, she ordered the identities of witnesses to be disclosed, and Jack right. Smith pointed out to her that that was just not allowable. It's really remarkable, some of the things that she's done to, that are just fundamentally uh, uh, unhinged. And of course, the most ridiculous thing that Cannon is considering is that Trump could declassify documents simply by thinking about them, or even after he was president. So let me ask you this question. Because I, I think this is the next logical question, because the president of the United States, you, unlike, say, Hillary Clinton in her case, right. a president has the power to declassify. Correct. Okay. You had said on Truth Social a number of times you did de declassify. I did declassify, yes. Okay. W is there a process? What was your process to declassify? It doesn't have to be a process, as right. I understand it. it. You know, there's different people say different right. things, but as I understand, there doesn't have to be. If you're the president of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. And in my opinion, one of the most disturbing things Cannon has done is to allow the witness list for the trial to be announced publicly. Now, why is that important? It, it's going to be a bloodbath. And they were going to release the witness list um, for all the witnesses. So at that point, I said, oof. So, you know, ultimately, I said, let me jump in front of this. What a moment it must have been when Judge Eileen Cannon, the Trump appointee overseeing the classified documents case, asked the special counsel's team when they'd be publishing their witness list. 
like a record scratch. The famously stoic Jack Smith reportedly sat upright in his seat, raised his eyebrows, looking visibly shocked. As you heard, it was reason enough for one central witness, Brian Butler, Trump employee number five, to shed his protective anonymity in an attempt to get out ahead of things. It wasn't the first eyebrow-raising move Judge Cannon has made, and it certainly wasn't the last. But where such instances previously fell under the heading highly irregular, like indulging Team Trump's efforts to delay and entertaining dubious legal arguments, now her conduct appears downright baffling to legal experts. And there was news this week that Stormy Daniels is still getting death threats. I was in a parking lot going to a fitness class with my infant daughter. I was taking, you know, the seats facing backwards in the back seat, diaper bag, you know, getting all the stuff out. And a guy walked up on me and said to me, leave Trump alone, forget the story. And then he leaned around and looked at my daughter and said, a, a beautiful little girl, it'd be a shame if something happened to her mom. And then he was gone. The document case is really simple and should not be delayed. Trump not only recklessly kept and displayed documents to those without security clearances, he lied to the feds about the number of documents and even instructed employees to destroy them when it became clear that Mar-a-Lago would be raided. This might be the easiest of the four criminal cases facing Trump and in many ways the most important. With Trump's current financial crisis leaving him in need of hundreds of millions in bond money, does anyone anyone second guess the possibility that Trump would sell secrets for money? What do you think is going to happen here? What is she doing? Is she going to announce a, a trial date that's real at any point? I don't think, well, she, not that's real. I mean, she will announce a trial date at some point. You know, any other judge in the country would have long ago announced the trial date um, and then simply moved it. Uh, I don't think she has any intention of letting this case come to trial before the election or before the inauguration, um, uh, which may not matter if Trump loses. Uh, because the case would ultimately get to trial. Uh, but if he wins, uh, you know, it's highly consequential because they'll have the ability to dismiss it. And I mean, and to her credit, this is not the only case that she has made fundamental errors in. I mean, she recently uh, uh, butchered the uh, public right to trial by excluding a defendant, uh, a defendant's family from jury selection. Um, now, that case pled, so it won't be dealt with on appeal. But, um, you know, she just is you know, the wrong judge. I wish the chief judge of the of the district court there would step in or the 11th Circuit would step in sua sponte, as we say, on their own, on their yeah, own Yeah, because volition. who would decide if, and, if Smith makes a motion to, to, rec to have her removed? Who, who decides? So that would be decided by the uh, 11th Circuit. All right. I have to say, uh, to her credit, um, that's the preface for what, <laughs> for what you said thereafter right. was a new use of credit. Yes, to, to her credit, she could, yeah, to her credit, she could merely be incompetent. Trump banged a porn star while his wife was breastfeeding their newborn. You don't think that guy would sell you out for a buck? Judge Cannon needs to figure this out and figure it out quick. You're either on the side of justice or whatever the hell this is. Time to pack it up. Who's with me? This isn't their Republican Party anymore. Am I wrong? Damn right. Yes. Tick tock. You're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. <laughs> Follow, like, and hit notifications as Really American keeps you up to date on the latest Republican cult lie in this very important year. For Really American, I'm Chip Franklin.